So kind of moving on to your lab and what you're currently working on. Um, so could you could you talk a little bit about your your lab and what yeah what what is the current projects that you're working on and what's coming up next? Sure. Um, so I mean we have uh, obviously several projects related to NAD. Um, we do a lot of work on on liver regeneration just because that's something we've found um, to depend on NAD levels. There's a sort of a natural decline in NAD as the liver is trying to regenerate, so it gives us an opportunity to um, you know to test which of the downstream enzymes might be responsible for the beneficial effects of boosting NAD um, and, and to give a really, you know, potentially human relevant situation where you have a liver injury and it, and it really may be uh, beneficial in that case to supply NAD quickly. Um, we do, uh, we've done a few other you know, sort of related injury models like the like hemorrhagic shock. So animals that have had um, a bleeding incident that's, you know, life-threatening and to see if we can resuscitate them more effectively if we give NAD boosters, which does improve survival um, and recovery of blood pressure. Um, we've just recently started doing uh, kidney injuries. So we can do um, simulate a, a chemotherapy induced kidney injury and NAD precursors are very effective at, uh, at reducing the, the injury and restoring kidney function in those models. Uh, so that's one sort of family is just sort of the, these, these injury models where NAD is beneficial. Um, a big part of the lab is still doing tissue specific genetic models. And so that's a big part of our contribution to the field has been you know, instead of giving these molecules that go to the whole body and then seeing a benefit of really trying to boost NAD levels or decrease NAD levels in a specific tissue, and understand the consequences of that isolated deficiency. Uh, and so we're now doing that, um, we've done that in, in muscle and published it, and we've done that in liver. We now have a, a model uh, in heart where we can knock down NAD levels specifically and look at the contribution of that to heart failure. Because this is another situation, right, where people have seen NAD levels are low in failing hearts and supplementing the whole body is beneficial. But it's an open question whether it's actually boosting NAD in cardiomyocytes that's beneficial or whether it's, for instance, um, lowering vascular resistance by improving endothelial cell function that just makes things easier on the heart, you know, or whether you're changing fuel use in the liver, which is supplying ketones and other things to the heart. Uh, so we're really testing what's the direct effect of manipulating NAD levels in the heart without manipulating them anywhere else. Right. And then um, a big, you already mentioned uh, the NAD transporter for, for mitochondria was a you know, recent discovery for the lab, but that was something we were looking for for a while and are now sort of frantically scrambling to understand the relevance of that transporter to, to different diseases, whether it actually you know, might underlie any human genetic diseases and you know whether it's a, a, a target that potentially is gonna influence metabolism in vivo, um, particularly in, in different cancers. It seems like it's upregulated and downregulated in some tumor types. <laughs> right, interesting. So. Of, of kind of the anti-aging research technology at the moment, what do you see is the most promising? Uh, you mean in my, in my lab or in the, well, the field as a whole? Well, well, <laughs> well, kind of both, but um, <laughs> either, either's good, like in your lab or uh, just in general. No, yeah, well, so I, I mean, I, th I think, like I said at the beginning, I think NAD precursors are, you know, the most promising in one sense in that I think, you know, there, there does seem to be some benefit and we can do it, right? They're, they're safe, ready to go. Um, so I think that's maybe the, the most promising thing in the field right now for an immediate effect. Right. Yes. <laughs> um, but I think uh, I've been really intrigued by, by senolytics, which may end up getting tied in here. So these are compounds that uh, eliminate senescent cells. Right. And so it turns out we have one of the downsides of senescent cells turns out to be that they do recruit CD38 positive cells and they do locally deplete NAD. You know, and so there may be a convergence here where eliminating senescent cells actually is partly working by restoring NAD levels. Um, but there's a decent amount of evidence now that that, that um, also is effective in mouse models that they live a little bit longer without senescent cells and, and get healthier. And I think that's an intervention that's getting close to being possible in humans or there are human trials going on, but it's uh, something we also may be able to do safely. So just at the end, so. Can you, would you mind sharing your personal longevity protocol? 
Yeah, I mean, I, I honestly, I probably have a disappointing one compared to a lot of people in the field. I, I, I tend to, um, you know, to experiment on myself with a lot of these things, but sort of transiently. Um, I, uh, I can okay. say I, I don't have a committed protocol at all that I follow. Um, I do take NAD boosters, you know, off and on for a few weeks at the time at a time just to see, you know, if I feel different and if I experience any of the things I hear anecdotally from people. Um, I'm going to say they, you know, the one thing I have noticed is faster growing fingernails, which I've heard from some other people. <laughs> I yeah. think that's, that's probably real. Um, I, you know, I, I'm not sure that I can say that uh, you know, that I've had any other personal experience that uh, that is definitely true. You know, there's there's always some question in your mind about how you're feeling a given day or whatever is is related to it. Um, but I would I would say, you know, nothing major that I'm confident in yet. <laughs> okay, interesting. So you. Do you do you take your kind of do you do blood work when you take NAD boosters? Do, um, I have, um, you know, not I don't routinely get it done. You don't okay. I mean, it's not like you, something you can do in your lab. Um, um, yeah, I mean, we, we we could, but it's kind of frowned upon to be doing too much self experimentation in the lab. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, oh. So, yeah, no. Um, have you tried? Um, have you tried the re kind of reduced forms of NAD, like NA uh, of of NMN or NR, like NMNH or NRH? Right, uh, and we've played around with them a little bit in you know in cultured cells, um, and and we you know replicate other people's findings that they are much more effective for boosting NAD levels in a lot of cells. Uh, I think you know we we no we, so we haven't um, we haven't done a whole lot of in vivo work with those yet, but are starting to. Interesting. So, okay, are they are they kind of part of the experiments you're working on at the moment? Yeah, I mean, sort oh, yeah. of in increasingly they're getting added on as they they do seem to you know, they follow a different uh, biosynthetic pathway to reach NAD. Um, so there's nicotinamide riboside kinases NRKs that. Um, <laughs> were discovered by Charlie Brenner and kind of set off this whole supplement idea, you know, uh, uh, the, what take nicotinamide riboside and convert it to mononucleotide so you can continue on to NAD. Um, and it's actually um, adenosine kinase, um, a, a different kinase completely that takes the reduced form NRH and converts it to NMNH so we can go on to NADH. Um, so it actually is surprisingly just tapping into a different biochemical pathway that may have maybe more active in some cells and tissues. <laughs> I look, I read some of the papers and it does seem interesting. Yeah. Can I ask just about your, your diet? Do you have a, a specific diet that you favor? No. Um, you know, I mean, I, I think over the course of, you know, getting involved in some of this longevity research, I've gone from a super unhealthy diet to an average diet, <laughs> more so than, than gone super healthy. Um, I, you know, I do, um, I do just naturally, you know, eat in, in kind of a tight window. I tend to not eat anything until one or two in the afternoon, you know, and, and then, you know, eat lunch and then through dinner and a little bit in the evening. But um, so you see some of these time restricted feeding protocols coming up now. And I, that, that's kind of my natural behavior. Um, so I'm happy to see that those <laughs> seem to be beneficial for health. Um, okay. Yeah. I don't follow anything very strict. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I do that too. Uh, Professor Bao, thank you so much. So that was a, a very in-depth look at NAD. That was very helpful. Um, and it's just, there seems to be so much work that needs to be done. That's... Yeah, no, it's surprising. I mean, the, the more we learn, the more we realize we don't know. And <laughs> it's definitely uh, still uh, an expanding field in terms of mechanistic understanding. Right. Yes. So anyway, thank you very much for that uh, update. It was very helpful. And uh, so can you tell people where they can find out some more information about what you're doing in your lab? So we actually have a, a Twitter handle, finally, uh, created by one of the postdocs because I'm uh, kind of incompetent with, with Twitter, but it's uh, at Bauer Lab, B-A-U-R-L-A-B, you know, mm -hmm. uh, Twitter. And so we're trying to uh, get more in the habit of putting current announcements on there. Uh, you know, but otherwise the, the primary source is the, it's obviously the papers that we're uh, putting out. We try to put out a press release um, as often as possible and, uh, and to get those papers into, uh, into PubMed. Right. Okay. So thank you so much. And I, I do hope that we get the opportunity uh, to talk again. All right. Me too. It was, uh, it was my pleasure. Thanks for having me.
Thank you. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button and choose all for any new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.